Hello and welcome back. I know it's been a while. Um, I hope we're all doing well and excited about the new ServiceNow Quebec release. And of course all the Deltas exams that are going to come along with it. Who wouldn't be excited about the prospect of doing more exams? Fantastic. Um, okay, so in this video I'm going to give a quick overview of my top seven features of the Quebec release. Why seven? Well, five wasn't really enough for me to get everything I wanted to say in there and I, yeah I guess I get overly excited plus everyone really does five so why not seven but before we get started and if you are new around here and haven't yet subscribed please go ahead click subscribe and smash the bell icon and you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video just like this one okay enough waffle let's get to it so instant scan. So up until now, um, if we needed to um, run a scan or a health check on our instance, we'd need to go to ServiceNow or a third party company and ask them to run a scan. And they used to be called ACE reports. Um, I think they're now called health scans. Um, but it's where ServiceNow looks at our instance, looks at how much, um, how far we've gone out of the box, what custom code we've got on there. And they break it down by things such as upgradability and security and user experience and performance. This feature is now puts this natively inside the platform. Um, and if we go to the left hand side and type in instant scan, we can see here, we'll have a quick navigate around where we've got a bunch of checks. So there's 86 out the box checks, which break it down, like I said, by security and upgradability. And it will look at service now best practices. And you can run the checks either based on a full scan check, which you can execute now, or you can schedule scans. The really cool feature is that we can create our own checks to this as well. So perhaps we have our own best practices so we can write our own checks and put those in place as well. So we're not limited to those 86. And when the, the, the scan runs, we get a dashboard such as this where we can look at the results and then perhaps address some of the um, maybe technical debt um, here. Really cool feature. I guess this does call into question how how often do we run uh, scan checks and what's our strategy going forward with scan checks is it something that we want to do periodically once a quarter is it something we want to add into the sprint life cycle when we're, we're delivering new features um, what new checks do we want to implement so there's some there's some questions there that I, I guess we've got to answer and perhaps we will naturally over time but it's a really cool feature and it gives us um, as techies developers to to run those scans perhaps before we start work and when we finished um, finished the work that we've got or even when we're looking at new instances we haven't seen before we can run that and, and kind of get a baseline of where it's at really cool feature I like this one and I'll be using it a lot okay script tracer so this is another one I'm really excited about um, and it's really for us devs us techies um, and it's great so this builds on a um, feature that I've already covered, uh, which was released a, a while back now called Script Debugger. I've already done a video on it. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. I'll put a link in the description. I'll also put one of those annoying little tile things up on the on the video um, so you can click on it from there if you want to. But with the Script Debugger that we've used before, if you want to debug a script, you need to know which script you want to debug, right? So you need to go to the business rule or script include um, and start debugging from there. Script Tracer, um, well, let's fire it up and see. So if you click in here um, and we type in Script Tracer, launches our separate window and we can see Script Debugger here. But on Script Tracer, if we start the trace, we go back to our instance um, and I'm just going to go and update if I could spell. Uh, not doing too well today. I'm just going to create a new incident. Um, that'll do. That's it. We're just going to click save. Right. And I've just quickly switched screen so you could see it happening. So when I've created that incident and saved it, what this script tracer is doing is it's looking at all the server side script that's running based on me um, creating that or inserting that incident. So it allows us to see exactly what's happening and in what order. Um, so if we click into them, script include there. We can look at the script, transaction. I mean, this is brilliant, guys. This is stuff that we, you know, 
it would just make our lives easier um, from from years past. But here we go. Um, again, if we're finding a particularly annoying problem, we know it's server-side script and we need to debug it. This is our weapon of choice from now on. Brilliant little feature. Um, I'll probably cover it a bit more in depth, uh, in depth in the next few months. So NLQ builder for lists and reports. Um, is that cheeky of me to have two? Does that class as two? We're, we're going to call it one. So NLQ builder for, for um, lists and reports. Again, this is really cool. And I think it's a bit underrated because it doesn't seem to be shouted about as much as I feel it should. Um, I saw a demo of this. Uh, well, I think it might have been 2019 now. Um, and it was really cool. And they actually used it on a mobile phone and they, they, they used Siri um, to, to run this feature. And, and you'll it'll become apparent uh, when I quickly run through it. So let's do that. Stop waffling. Right, let's go. Um, let's start with the reports. So if we go to reports and we want to create a new report. Now, previously, I need to know um, what table it was. Um, so data source, I need to know how I was going to build it. I needed some kind of level of understanding of the table structure in ServiceNow. Now I can just say incidents by priority and I can ask ServiceNow for that answer. Lo and behold, it creates my report. Now, granted, I probably want to add some more um, more depth to this report, but it gives me a base that I can, can fiddle around and mess around with. Really cool. Um, and that's the bit I was, I was saying that I, I saw them do that with Siri, actually. Right. Another cool feature, um, same thing, but it's on lists, All right? So let's just go to all incidents. All incidents, we click this little speech bubble. And here we can say incidents by priority. Not very exciting, I'm gonna give you the same demo. Ask that, lo and behold, it looks at all the incidents, it groups them by priority. Again, for us um, for us techies of service now, we take this for granted. We, we could just do this in our sleep. Um, but people not as technical um, and, you know, maybe new to ServiceNow, this is a really cool feature, okay? And there's lots of things they can do. Um, and lo and behold, I'm, I'm sure ServiceNow, as administrators, um, we will have to perhaps improve or train the system um, with more queries. Really cool feature. Hope it gets a bit more airtime than it has already. Um, again, one of, my, one of my top seven. Catalog variables. What can be exciting about catalog variables in Quebec, I hear you ask. Well, let's go and have a look. So if we go to variables and look here, uh, what does it give us? What does this, this new uh, release give us? Well, in Quebec release, we now get these two new checkboxes, read only and hidden. Now, I don't know about you, but I many times have I chose to make a variable read only. So perhaps we're bringing back the user information. Again, I've done um, done videos based on that um, Glide Ajax, bringing back information on, on, on um, catalog items. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but many times we've brought back that information and we've put it inside a variable and made it read only just to make it visible for the end user. How do we make things read only um, on the catalog item? Well, we'd use a UI policy. Um, you could use a client script as well, of course, but we'd use a UI policy. Now, with this, we don't need to. How excellent's that? Okay, cuts down on a bit on the bit of the config, bit of the scripting. Equally, with hidden, many a times have I bought stuff back from the server, and I stored it inside a hidden variable, which I'm then going to use when the record gets inserted. I've done that before. There is use cases to do that. I can now use that hidden. Again, it cuts down the use of me having to use a UI policy or um, a client script. Excellent little feature, very sneaky. It's not getting much airtime, but I feel it's one worth um, worth knowing. We need to know about it, um, so it because it will just make our lives easier going forward. Flow designer. Um, it should come as no great surprise that in the Quebec instance, we've had some new features um, added to, to Flow Designer, and it's had a new facelift as well, um, which we'll take a quick look at. So if we go into Flow Designer, um, we'll create, I've already created a new flow, um, just to, so we could get to the features. Um, 
the features that I'm going to talk about are the ones that I think are going to get we're going to get more use out of. Um, that's not to say it's the um, the full list. Um, I'll try and mention as many as I possibly can, but I, I'm just going to talk mainly about the ones that that I like and I think we'll get um, a lot of use out of. So in terms of the the, the facelift it's had, it, as you can see, it's got a more fresh look. Um, I I call this kind of a fluffy look, um, but it just looks a bit more modern. Okay. So as we come into here, we've got a new trigger, which is a REST API, which again is going to be really, really useful. And I will definitely do a video based on that, but we're not going to cover that today. Um, we've got a new action, which I think for me is going to be so, so useful. So we now have a record producer action. So I'll give you an example. So perhaps we ran a flow based on the closure of an incident. So the trigger was incident um, got closed and we need to create a new incident. I don't know why you would, but let's pretend we have. Previously, what we'd have to do is create an action um, called create record, and we'd have to say incident, and we'd have to fill out all the fields. What we can now do is we can use this record producer, and we can just simply pick create incident, and then throw in the parameters, the input parameters into that um, that action. Really great. It's gonna uh, it's gonna be uh, an absolute time saver that one. So that's really good. Um, the other thing that um, the other one I really wanted to mention is around flow variables. So in um, legacy workflow, there is something called the scratch pad that we've all used before and it's been around for years where you could assign a, um, a variable, as it were, um, value to a scratch pad at the start of the workflow. And you can access that throughout um, the whole uh, life cycle of the work workflow, making our lives a bit easier. Flow Design has never had that until now, right? So what we can now do, and I will definitely um, do a video covering this, but is on the right hand side, we can add in flow variables. So this is where we'd add them. We'll just add something here, test, variable name, test. That's it. We add in flow variables here. So now we can access those throughout the flow. And what you would do is you'd use your flow logic and we could say set flow variables. So we can set those um, throughout the flow. We can access them. We can set them and we can change them. OK, so test and then we could add um, a different value. We can hard code the value or pick it from a uh, from a different action. Really useful. Um, I'm going to love getting involved with that one. So, yes, that's one of my um, top picks. Uh, another one to mention is around guided tour so they've done an embedded tour around here and we've also got access to variable sets as well um, but again for me i just wanted to mention the uh, record producer uh, action that we've got and the flow variables brilliant brilliant new features well done service now global apps okay so this this one i'm, I'm a bit tall between but i'm going to throw it in there because um, i think it's quite cool but also maybe quite controversial. So what they've now done, if we go to Studio, so if we want to create a new application, we can now select to do that inside the global scope. So previously, we could only do that inside our own scope, right? So if you wanted to create a new application um, for, I don't know, um, what's relevant? Booking your time at the pub for when they will open in the 12th, this is in the UK, um, you may create a scoped app. Now what you can do is create a global app, um, or I guess you, you you could create a global container to put your features in it, which are um, over and above what's in the, the global application at the minute. So I guess then it brings into the question of, is there any point in having update sets anymore? Because if we can put them inside our own little applications inside the global scope and then move between instances using um, the whole publish um, publish feature for applications. Why bother with update sets? I don't know. One of those debates. Um, but I thought I'd throw that in there because I thought it was quite cool. Um, one of the other things I did um, here mention around global scope is not only can you create applications in the global scope seen here on screen, um, you you'll be able to also um, access the global scope in app um, from from this view of already existing um, applications but that is only if the publisher has allowed that to happen so they would have had to allow you to access um, configuration records inside that global scope for that particular app 
um, in which case you'd be able to access it. Also, I couldn't really find any, so perhaps that's just words that they said and haven't really done it yet, or, or I'm looking too early, I don't know. Um, but there we go. That's one of the features I think is quite cool. Um, I think it's going to take a, um, a bit of a while to understand how we want that to work um, in the real world. Okay. UI Builder. How can I talk about Quebec new features without mentioning UI Builder? So this is getting a lot of hype on YouTube. It's getting a lot of hype on the community, and quite rightly so, because it, it, it's absolutely brilliant. So it's a it's a point and click interface. I guess that's how I'm going to describe it. Let's go take a look. Um, that allows you to create new pages or uh, kind of change existing pages um, for agent workspace and service portal. Um, and it'll include things like, uh, you know, different web in, in components out of the box that allows you to do that. So let's just have a quick look. It's been here in previous versions, um, but they've really gone to town on it this version, um, and it looks very slick. So I've just clicked on, on something that's already there. Um, so if we just click menu at the top, again, I haven't had a huge play around with this, and, and but I'm going to. So it allows us to create a new page. We can call this test2. Great. Okay, let's just look at the components. So let's add component. Look at all the components down here. I think prior to this, we had, um, I certainly remember there being a handful of components. Now we've got over 100 different components that are just out of the box. I mean, we've got text area, type head, iframes, toggles. Um, data row, data set, data visual, the, the end, the, the list is endless. Um, and I think what we'll find is more and more people creating components, and putting them on the store, will also have access to them as well. We can put agent assistance, we can drag in that, that in there, there um, as well. Okay, so I think this is going to be, um, this is going to be an absolute game changer for user interface, user experience. I think gone are the days are of us. Um, creating a new application and, and saying to an end user, if you want to access um, incidents, then type incidents and go to my incidents down here. Gone are these days. I think we need to be a bit more inventive um, that, uh, to, to give our users a bit more, um, a better experience to make it easier for them. And I think UI Builder takes us definitely a, a lot of the way there. So there'll be a lot of news on that. And I will certainly be doing a video um, on that one in the next few months. Okay. okay, so that brings us to the end of um, my top seven features of the Quebec release of ServiceNow. Um, I understand there's a lot in there. I just wanted to pick out the things that I found quite useful. I mean, uh, I could have mentioned catalog data lookup, platform encryption, UX analytics, um, universal request app, workforce, workforce optimization, BCM, process automation, catalog builder, the list is endless. Um, but I wanted to keep it to, to things that I found was useful. Okay, so I hope that you found this useful. Um, and if there's anything you want me to expand on, or if there's any topics you want me to discuss, or if there's any features you think I should have talked about that I didn't talk about, drop it in the comments below. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. And don't forget to keep an eye out for the next videos. Okay, hope you've all enjoyed it. I'll speak to you next time. Thanks.